Should we do the super quick PPM radio broadcast one? Ladies and gentlemen, in the studio, Eric Kern. Hey. 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 All right, thanks for coming in, Eric. Bye. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very that was much. A short version. There you go, Mara. We caught up on time now. <laughs> Detroit Grand Prix. See you later. <laughs> Detroit GP Lake Thank you. Eric's in studio, of course. At number 31, the Wheeland Engineering Racing Cadillac, the IMSA DPI series, of course. And uh, you're going to be here with the Detroit Grand Prix. Um, let me make sure I get the dates right. May 31st through June 2nd, DetroitGP.com. I get it right the first time? All right. Nice All right. Dude. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Uh, I should get a gig here. Do the radio or something. Say that. And, of course, you last year, I want to talk, we're going to talk a lot about what's going to happen at Daytona and what's going on in the series and stuff, but I want to go back to last year's race. You guys wrecked the crap out of the car on Friday, didn't you? Uh, it wasn't us, no. That was the uh, the Taylor car. The Taylor trouble. car? But you guys had, yeah. you started where? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, uh, my teammate Felipe Nasser, not he, me personally, he, but not my teammate uh, <laughs> Felipe Nasser, yeah, he, he spun in uh, practice and, and tore the back of the car off. So, and yeah, that wasn't so good for our wheel and caddy. So you started th- Third row, and uh, I remember because I was started, there. Yeah, it was start- a short qualifying session yeah. because the session got, I think I qualified fifth, something like that. So which would have been third row. And you were working your way up. Yep. And picking guys off, which I, it's always funny to me. People can say you can't pass on Belle Isle. I'm like, really? Just come to an IMSA race. They're passing right. all the time. Yeah, you got to be really aggressive and you got to time the passes. I mean, because you have such a little, you know, such a narrow racetrack, right? I mean, Detroit yeah. Belle Isle is you got wall here and a wall here and a wall everywhere, right? So if you're going to get a pass, man, you get it. You better. Full commitment and get it done right away. So I had a couple good passes earlier in uh, you did. the race. And then was. Felipe got in there, and you guys had a great pit strategy, and you were right there at the front. But are you finding now that the, the more years you spend on Belle Isle driving the track, that maybe you're finding places to pass you would have never thought about in the first couple of years? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, really, there's only a limited number of places you can really pass. But, uh, yeah, it just depends on what's going on with the cars around you, how good your car really is. But, you know, last year we had a, our wheel and Cadillac was phenomenal car was just really good it was good over the bumps which is important and uh we just had that the chassis really well sorted the action express guys are doing a good job so yeah we were quick i think we would have even qualified better than fifth had we had a full qualifying run but nevertheless started fifth or so and then moved up at least a couple spots fairly quickly and uh then it was all about like you said jim pit strategy yeah so when i came in and we did a driver change uh we just got in and out of the pits really quick and we just kind of leapfrogged to the front in the pit strategy, it wasn't necessarily like we were passing cars on the track. It was a pit strategy that, that basically put Nasser to the front. And then we just kept being smart about uh, keeping him out there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we've had a really good wheel and Cadillac there. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's such a fun place to drive. It's very, very challenging, but so much fun. It's it, it's my favorite series. By the way, we're on Facebook Live as well. Say hi to everybody up there. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hello, Facebook Live. That's Eric Curran right there. He's going to get me really? a Ferrari in a little right. bit. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh, okay. front. Is that, is that what it is? <laughs> But how are the t- is there tire wear involved? I mean, obviously there's tire wear in any race, but on Belle Isle because of the shorter distance of what you guys normally run, maybe is it as severe? Are you running a softer compound? Do they let you do that? You do it. So last year we had uh, we ran Continental tires for years, and it was, it was right. just a spec tire. So you had a you had a harder compound tire for Daytona on the high banks, and then you ran the softer compound tire all through the season. So we just had one tire, but. Yeah, there's definitely some some tire degradation for sure. I mean, again, you got to remember the Detroit Bell Isle is really street surface, right? right? So it's not necessarily track surface. They've done a really good job of repaving and new concrete and so forth, but it does beat up on the tire for sure. So tire management uh, is an important part of it, especially a lot of slow speed corners where you're hard in the acceleration can wear out the rear tires. So tire management's a big deal. Make sure you get your traction control correct. But um, yeah, I mean... We're able to push pretty hard, but, you know, our stints are typically 45 minutes or so before we run out of fuel in that wheel right. Cadillac. So we p- typically put a new set of tires on on every, on every pit stop, unless we're trying to do a little bit shorter fuel run. Maybe we'll just do left side tires or two tires in one case because the left side takes uh, more abuse than the right side does. So there's a bit of strategy in there for sure, but, you know, tire management for sure. You, you know, be careful about locking up the tires. Some of the, the brake zones are very bumpy. So it's easy to kind of get the car bouncing a bit in the brake zone, easy to lock the tires up. But it's interesting, as we run on, the weekend runs on at Detroit, the track gets better and better because you got to remember it's just a park uh, all year round until we come there. So as the Indy cars run and as the IMSA cars run, the track level grips up. So by race day, it's faster. Yeah, 
We see how the lap times get quicker and quicker throughout the weekend. So does that make it even even more important to stay out of the pebbles as, as the weekend progresses? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you get a lot of what we call marbles, which are kind of debris from the tires that right. get off on the sides of the track. That's what gets really tricky when you're trying to overtake and pass other cars is when you're off the racing line, you're typically in those marbles. Track can get dirty, dirt on the track, whatever. So you've got to be really careful when you're offline or you're racing two by two. I mean, it's... It's not the friendliest track to go two by two or especially three wide at Detroit. It wasn't it wasn't your your car, but there was a car last year and I think I can't remember if it was a BMW or one of the one of the cars racing in the IMSA race. My God, it looked like they were drifting through turn one. They right. just could not get it straightened out. And God bless them, man. I mean they were you could tell they were all in. Yeah. But every time they they hit that corner, it was we'd all go, Oh, okay, they made it. All right. <laughs> One and two was one of the things I remember was it Will a couple of years ago? Will Power told us that he actually broke a strap, a harness. During during practice, because there's so many lateral G forces through there, True. you guys seem to be going through there. Just, and when you go to DetroitGP.com, ah, is he mentioned again there? <laughs> no, but seriously, when you go to the website to get your tickets for the race, you see that that track. Do you feel it as well? Because you guys seem to be flying through there. Turn one is really really fast. The, you know, the thing is, you're you're coming up just under the start finish line, which is right before turn one. But turn one, that right hander is really quick, and you have. It's well over, I don't know, it's probably 110 or 120 mile an hour corner. But you got to remember, at that speed, you get a lot of downforce on the car, a lot of air speed. So you can really take that right hand fast. But after you get through turn one, you got turn two, which is goes from right to left in a hurry, up over the rise. You kind of get the car light, the RPMs come up. So it's a tricky complex of corners, but when you get it right, it's, it's superb. Now, you've won two of the, the past three years, right, as a team, and then also endurance last year, too, right? Yeah, so I've had a pretty successful last couple of years. So 2016, we obviously won the Detroit Grand Prix in, yep. our, in our wheel and Cadillac. I mean, sorry, Corvette at the time. Uh, when I was driving with Dane Cameron that season, we won the championship in 16. And then 18, we came back, won the Detroit Grand Prix, and then won the 18 uh, IMSA championship with, does, with that NASA guy. Does Dane have anything to do? Because all he does is anytime you post something, he has to make a comment. Right. I know. Is that all he texted me this morning. That's I told, what I'm saying. Like, I does, told him does I would have a job? Not. Does he work somewhere? Or what does <laughs> he do? I don't think do? he does. He rides his bike once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> or at least he posts about it. I don't know if he's actually riding it. <laughs> Every time he puts something up, I'm like, I, I go to have pep. There's Dane. Like, yeah, whatever. You get your Cadillac, whatever, dude. <laughs> I texted a picture of his Acura in the uh, auto show booth this morning. And I told him I broke the driver's side mirror off. <laughs> <laughs> Is it kind of weird seeing your car hanging up on the wall there at the auto show? Yeah, I wonder how they got it there. It's pretty cool. No, pretty it looks well, it looks phenomenal. Know. I mean, the Cadillac display is top notch. I mean, it's it's quite the work of art. But uh, that that red and white wheel and Cadillac looks good up on there. It almost looks like it's a thirty five degree banking at Daytona, but uh, it shows well in the display. So uh, speaking of Daytona, you guys are getting ready for that. Of course, we got our Daytona, the um, the the 24 hours. We're always 24, it's the 26th and the 27th. Um, you and I are talking about as we came in here this morning. That they had the the roar before the 24. The crowds were amazing. That was. Inst- were you surprised when you got there? You're looking around because I'm I'm watching some of it. I'm the nerd that watches it online, right. and I'm looking around, going, "Holy crap! There's a ton of people there." There were a lot of people there. I mean, I think it's just. There's just a, a lot of uh, press, a lot of media, a lot of uh, exposure around IMSA as a series. I mean, with what's happened in the last 12 months with all the IndyCar drivers coming in, Formula One drivers, NASCAR drivers, you know, Penske, all, Yost, all these big high-level teams, it's the best of the best sports car drivers in the world are in IMSA now. And they continue to, obviously with Alonzo, and continue to bring in these big-name guys to run. And I think that that's just adding to the exposure and, uh, and the traction that the IMSA WeatherTech series has. So you just look at, you know, you walk through the paddock on a, on a roar, which is essentially a testing weekend for us, and it's packed full. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a, what a race weekend used to be at Daytona. This is just a test weekend. So I can only imagine what uh, how busy the race is going to be at the end of the month. It should be some, uh, some big exposure and big fan base. It's interesting how the evolution of racing in North America that we're seeing it now. I mean, to me, I always say uh, when when another series and, and when F1, for example, when drivers and team principals um, question or maybe even I would say take a shot. Yeah, I'll say take a shot at other series. To me, that's an indicator that they're like, ooh, look what they're doing over there. And you and you see all these drivers coming over, like you said, come to 24. I'm pretty sure Penske has everyone. Has he got Michael Jordan? Who, who's left? <laughs> right. Well, got, he's on his way. <laughs> uh, is that Michael Jordan's going to be a crew chief? But think about it. I mean, what you guys are doing there, man. I mean, you know, Fernando Alonso, and you see all these guys coming in Montoya, and then, of course, you know, the Taylor brothers and all these amazing drivers. The Taylor brothers could drive any car anywhere in the world, yeah. but they, they stay here in the series, and I think it's more than their dad. It's the competition level. 
And you and I talk every week when you guys race IMSA with the DPIs. It gets better and better and better. And you guys beat the crap out of each other, but it seems to be that you're it's respectful racing at the end of it. Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's it's unbelievably competitive. I mean, more competitive than I've ever seen it. I mean, as long as I've been racing, I've never seen sports car racing be this competitive. I mean, very, very high-level cars. The DPI platform, which is, you know, that type of car that we're racing. Right. Unbelievably competitive cars. Uh, they've sped them up even more this year, a little less restrictor, a little less weight. We've gone to the Michelin tire this year. And you saw lap records being broken in in, uh, in the roar, you know, at the, at the test. I mean, lap records that stood for ages, like GTP level track records were broken uh, at the roar. So it just shows how competitive it is, how fast these cars have gotten. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to make for some of the best racing you've ever seen. But to your point, it's like, you know, people ask me, hey, where do you want to go from here in racing? I'm like, I'm in it. I mean, this is the highest right. level of sports car racing in the world is here. I mean... Um, you see IndyCar, like I said, IndyCar drivers, Formula One drivers, NASCAR drivers, they're all coming over to our series. So it's fun to have a home there. It's fun to be part of it for so long. It's just, you know, I think you're going to see, especially this Rolex 24 hour, but all season long, it's going to be unbelievably competitive, beating and banging, good stuff racing and good for the fans. So the, the variables you've got this year, you've got more horsepower, right? A okay. little bit. Yeah, a little, a little bit. less restrictor. Yeah. Uh, downforce, same or? Same. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Brand new manufacturer retires. Correct. So you don't, I mean, it's Michelin. It's not like they, you know, it's it's Larry's house yeah, of tires. Yeah, they've built a few tires before. Right, I think. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But racing tires versus regular tires, I don't care what it is, there's still dynamics w- with, with the series. So there's more there's more unknowns for you going into, into Daytona than, than normal. Yeah, I mean, the, the the changes to the car are very, very minimal. They've, they've you know, so they, they did a sep- class separation between the DPI cars, which are kind of the Cadillacs and the Mazas and the right. Acuras. Uh, they've separated them from that LMP2 spec platform that they shared, which is kind of the European version car. We were we had a combined class last year. This year, they've separated it. And to do that, you know, they had to slow us down on the DPI side a little bit, a little more restrictor, slow us down to run the same level as those LMP2 cars last year. This year, the LMP2 cars broke off. It's a separate class now. So now they've sped up the DPI cars again. So a little, little, little bit more power, a little less restrictor, a little less weight. Um, and then again, like I said, the Michelin tire. The combination of those things has picked up some pretty good speed. I mean, I think we're seeing one and a half to two seconds faster per lap, which is massive in the racing world. Uh, last year versus this year at Daytona. So how is you as a, as a driver and as successful as you've been, Eric? I mean, when you're racing there and, you know, it's a 24-hour race, so there's going to be some nighttime stuff. Um, your closing rate on some of these cars is going to change as well, I would assume, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you got to remember that, you know, we've obviously, we're in the DPI category, which is the fastest category of the right. series, but there's also GT Le Mans, which are like the factory yellow Corvettes, the four GTs, the BMWs, and then you've got GT Daytona, GTD, which is the lowest level, but... But they've all, everybody's gone to a Michelin spec tire. Everybody's done development over the winter. So, in fact, all of the cars have gotten faster. Across the board, even the GT Daytona cars are turning their fastest lap time. So, we've all sped up as a group. But, but again, you've still got a, you know, a, a DPI car like our wheel and Cadillac going 195 miles an hour versus, you know, a GT car that might be going 165 to 170. So, there's definitely some some uh some closing rates there and i think you're going to see lap times eight nine ten seconds difference between our car being that much faster than a gt car so you know if you mix in 40 or 50 cars in one daytona 24 hour there's some crazy stuff that's going to happen never mind the race of our own in class but but trying to challenge through and the gt guys are doing their own race and we're all racing on the same racetrack at the same time so it's going to be challenging. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a wild year. I think you're going to see some of the best sports car racing you've ever seen in 2019. Folks, watch us on Facebook, too. Seriously, well, a lot of people go for the IndyCar racing at Belle Isle as part of the Detroit Grand Prix. I cannot emphasize enough, you got to be there for the IMSA races. It's yeah. it's fantastic. It's beautiful, too. I mean, you obviously as a driver, but the colors, the cars, the, the way it looks, it's just old school to me. I mean, it's, it's fantastic to watch. Right. I mean, it's, it's cool, too, because, you know, from the fan perspective, you come there, you get to see a lot of great racing in one weekend. The Trans Am Series is there as well as IndyCar, as well as, as our IMSA Series. But, you know, our cars uh, have more relation to what you see on the street, right? Our Cadillac DPI has got a lot of Cadillac streetcar cues with the lights and the wheels and right. and the, cre- the Cadillac crest and so forth. And, and the GT cars 
The GT cars are literally production cars that they convert to race cars. So what's nice for the fans is they can relate to the car that they see on the track. Exactly. A little bit different than any Thank other Thank you. Car. That's exactly when, when I when I see these cars, when I see a Cadillac, when I see a Beamer, when I see the different series, when I see a Lambo or something, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out there, or one of the Ferraris, I'm like, oh, my God, that's a Ferrari racing. You know? I mean, you're right. That's yeah. a good excited about it, which I want to talk to you. Uh, Eric Kearns here, by the way. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're on Facebook Live here, the number 31, Wheeling Engineering Racing. Of course, a couple things to mention. DetroitGP.com. You guys will have a display, obviously, down at the auto show. We do? Yep. Will Power's uh, Indy 500 winner? Will we'll be in town again? Will we'll be in town again this Will's week. Will's the man. Yeah, Will's good the man. guy. Good and then, uh, of course, your car is on display there as well at the Cadillac, Cadillac display. display booth. Yep, and then, correct. of course, DetroitGP.com is the website. And uh, I would go to IMSA.com as well to follow you guys. Um, but you seem to have this little side business. This West Coast Exotics that you're doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me make sure I got the website it's right. I want to mention this. WestCoastExoticCars.com. That's it, yeah. Yeah. Um, we were looking through the cars, and I, first of all, you don't really have a car that was owned by Jason Statham, do you? We just might. We just might have a Shut silver the front Ferrari door. F12 that was owned by, that was Jason Statham's car. Yeah, very cool car. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was his car. We have him, you know, we've got him with pictures of the car and the whole thing. He owned the car since new. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a very cool piece and it's been quite the attention getter, you know, both in, in, on social media and, and all the press that it's gotten, but people come literally to West Coast Exotic Cars in Myriad, California, just to see that car. Does it have Jason Statham GPS on it? <laughs> That's a good question. You, you should have him do that. <laughs> we should. Turn left 400 right. feet. <laughs> Turn right 500 feet while punching the, the transporter. <laughs> <laughs> Your door's open. Your door's a ajar. Idea. To do some recordings, you, I can do that for you. Um, so let me ask you a question. We don't need Jason's tape. Got me right here. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy's right here. The price, yeah, twice the weight. It will work out perfectly. Um, so let me ask you. We always do this thing. We always get talking about movie cars and TV cars. All right. Let me ask you. Uh, would you rather have Magnum's Ferrari or the General Lee? Ooh, probably Magnum's Ferrari. Okay, Magnum's yeah. Ferrari like or Night Rider. Ooh, Knight Rider with the little, remember the LED light across oh, yeah, the yeah. front? We all thought it was so much technology now. It's like, that's, <laughs> right. that's yeah, level yeah. one autonomy. That's nothing. We're that's at level right. three now, Jeez. Bob. But that was 30 years ago, right. whatever it was. Maybe longer. Whether they have an ashtray and a cassette myself. deck, get the hell out of here with that. <laughs> right, exactly. So Magnum's Ferrari or Knight Rider? Knight Rider would be kind of cool. Why not? All okay. blacked out, right? It's got that crazy looking steering wheel. It looks like a fighter cockpit. The Smokey and the Bandit TA or Knight Rider? The TA. That okay. fun. Now the, now the TA or... Steve McQueen's Michael Delaney Porsche from Le Mans. Oh, that would be good, the Porsche from Le Mans. Okay, he's a car with my, guy. With my racing history, of course. Right. Number 20, Michael <laughs> Delaney. I watched that movie. He knows. I drive Merrill Nuts fan. I watch that movie two or three All times time. a year. The first 10 minutes, the greatest 10 minutes in racing movies ever. <laughs> would Would you ever, to have one of those cars, to go to that extreme, would you want to get one of those, get your hands on something like that? Oh, of course. I mean, anything like that. Those cars are, you know, very famous car. All It's all about the history of those cars. You know, not only are they super cool cars, but... To get the whole history, even this Jason Statham car, you know, is amazing. Just the background of it, and really, you know, it looks like a regular Ferrari. But look at the history and, and everything it's done. But anything like that that's been to Le Mans has that racing history and so forth. I mean, on West Coast Exotic Car side, we're seeing a lot more of those famous race cars coming through. You had a Shelby three hundred and fifty up there too. Was it a convertible? We did. Yep. Yep. Where did GT that come convertible. from? Convertible. Yeah, cool car. Yeah. Um, it was a car that was built uh, on the East Coast and by one of our good clients, and he shipped it from the East Coast out to the up to the West Coast to sell. Who have you sold to? It's famous. Uh, that's famous. Sylvester Stallone. We bought we bought his uh, Audi S8 just a couple months ago. Really? Yeah. That was cool. It has Sylvester Stallone right on the title. Pretty no. nice. No. Yeah. Take a picture cool. with it? <laughs> yeah, of course. you got to have a picture of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. So what's the one car in the world you want that you haven't been able to get your hands on? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I've become a, a big McLaren fan. We've been, you know, we buy and sell a lot of cars, but... The McLaren stuff has, has been phenomenal, but a, but an old school McLaren F1. Remember the three seaters with the with, center, the, with the gold foil Senna in the seat. background. Yes, yeah, yes. when you sit in the middle, that Those one. Those are so cool. What about the Senna, the McLaren Senna? Is it is this more of a novelty type car? I mean, obviously they're not doing mass production. It's McLaren, right? But is that going to have this kind of cachet twenty years down the road that th that this one has? I think for sure, limited production. I mean, it's obviously got the Senna name. It's uh, you know, it's it's a it's a big deal right now. I mean, there's very few cars that have been out there, but I think for sure you're going to see the same thing that you're seeing with the McLaren F1 down the road. Is these limited production, very special McLarens are going to be, you know, big value, a big deal down the road for sure. If I make you up a post, can you work it into the website? Sure. I want to. I want to take oh. a pitch. I'm gonna get an, oh, an older woman, an older woman like a granny, and I want to put an AMC Pacer up there. Right. Okay. In the midst of all these <laughs> amazing should. exotic cars, there's this AMC Pacer, and you say like, like one a pale green or something. Right. Or, <laughs> <laughs> 
one owner, Miss Del- Dolores Fairbottom of right. Columbus, Ohio. She never drove it at nights or weekends. Right. Low mileage, 120000 <laughs> And then has some insane price for right, it, we should. like $173,000 right, we'll just do to it. do that. Okay, yeah, we'll do cool. It. Eric, it's always great seeing you, man. I love talking. Congratulations on everything. Congratulations for winning last year, the whole series, the endurance stuff. Good luck at Daytona. Get some rest. Or do you not want to sleep a lot before Daytona? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you know, Daytona is a, tr- a tough race because you, you try to sleep in the middle of the race. You know, you do your two or three hour stint. The next guy gets in. You try to take a nap for an hour or two. You just start to slow down. Boom, boom. Someone's knocking on your RV door at two in the morning to get up and go 190 miles an hour again. It's tricky and back and forth. You know, we're just doing it with three drivers, so it's myself, um, Felipe Nasser, which you know yeah. we've, we've you know talked about Nasser and, and his experience, and then people Durani will be with us this year for the twenty four. So nice. we got a pretty good group. Do you send somebody to go bang on Barbosa's door? Just yeah, absolutely. Every once in a while? Yeah, as soon as he falls asleep. Right. <laughs> Pizza. We hook a truck up to it. We tow it away. There it is. <laughs> Next level. That's why. That's why you're a champion, man. Right. You do that stuff. Great. So we'll be looking forward to seeing your car at the auto Thank show. You. Is it weird taking pictures of your car hanging on a wall in someone else's building? Right. Oh, it's kind of cool. It was cool, but it's weird at the same time. Right, right. Yeah, I don't want to get up in it. You should have. Will they let let him get in the car? (laughs) I don't know. I was going to say no. Yeah, it's your car. Get in in there. Just tell him. Right. Just tell him. Say, Mark Roy right. said it was no, okay. Yeah, Just jump right up there. Step back. Step they'll totally. They'll totally. He's right. got a new title now. You can do anything. Now. <laughs> That's, That's cool. Yeah. Eric, did you see Jim Campbell this morning? Oh, did you see Jim? Oh, yeah. He's the man. Great guy. He is the man. Eric, all the best, bud. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thanks, guys.